We can also look at the protein identification techniques. So for one of the first uh, techniques is matrix assisted laser desorption and ionization, MALDI. And then it is accompanied with TOF, which is the time of flight. Uh, so basically in this diagram, you can see we mix a polypeptide uh, uh, with the organic solvent and place it on a target plate. And then we shoot a laser at it. For, uh, over here, we can see a nitrogen laser that is shot at this uh, organic compound. And the analyte and matrix ions that exude from there are then analyzed under the mass spectrometry machine. Another technique to create ions like this from the proteins is called electron spray ionization mass spectrometry, which basically calls for all the polypeptide mixture to be dissolved in a solvent and then pushed through a very narrow capillary. And these droplets are then passed uh, through uh, high voltage uh, space and analyzed under the uh, mass spectrometry machine. So in their time of light, which is the TOF, there is a mass analyzer that determines the charge, uh, sorry, the mass to charge ratio. And on the basis of that, we have, we create a chart, each polypeptide, like how intense the each polypeptide is from the mixture that we have provided. The mass spectrometry part itself can be thought to be composed of two segments. So one, for example, if we are getting the ions from the LCESI, which is liquid chromatography electrospray ionization, uh, we will be analyzing those polypeptides under the mass spectrometry and then immediately point out the polypeptide sequence that it is. So we can identify the polypeptide sequence in that ion itself. But if we want to fragment more information out of this, we will be able to run the mass spectrometry machine again after we have analyzed this ion in the first channel. So we will be running the mass spectrometry machine again on this ion and we can see all the amino acid residue chains that are com that compose this particular uh, peptide. This step is accompanied by cross checking from an data from a database, which is basically a theoretical spectrum, which we have stored in the protein database that we have, uh, where they already have an in silico digested information about what intensity corresponds to which residue. And that is how we can identify a polypeptide or a polypeptide acid, amino acid sequence inside the polypeptide. We can also try to find out the effect of reactions on certain amino acids, for example, uh, using de novo sequencing. So we will uh, be focusing on a reaction like sulfonation and have a mass spectrometry result taken before we apply the sulfonation technique and then one mass spectrometry image after we have applied the sulfonation. And you will see the typical mass differences that we see per peak. And if we observe certain mass difference, then we know that the sulfonation has uh, interacted with those particular amino acid residues or poly polypeptides. So that is one technique. We can also look at quantitative proteomics using isotope coded affinity tags. That is the ICAT technique. And this is basically gel free. Uh, we look at a probe, which is called an ICAT. And it is of two types. One uh, will consist of a deuterium uh, molecule. One consists of a hydrogen molecule. And these are called heavy reagent and light reagent, respectively. Uh, both the ICATs are composed of three basic parts. One is a reactive group, which is the label uh, labeling or uh, defining uh, defined amino acid side chains. For example, the cysteine molecule. So it will identify that molecule inside our protein. Uh, the second part is an isotopically coded linker which is cleavable and this is the part which decides whether this entire ICAT is heavy or light and lastly we have an affinity tag that is biotin and it is for the isolation of labeled proteins so we will see how this comes into play uh, in our mass spectrometry imaging so 
consider that we want to uh, decide which protein mixture is important or relevant for us so that we can run a mass spectrometry machine uh, on them. So we will label one of the mixtures as a light cat and the other one with a heavy eye cat. And uh, we will proteolize this entire um, protein mixture and then enrich, uh, basically isolate all the all the cut sequences that contain the iCAT tags and run that under the uh, mass spectrometry machine. And then we will see the peaks at the locations that we want to observe.